Welcome. Wow, that's loud. Hold on. Okay, welcome back, everybody. This is Tuesday Muse. I'm Kalani. Thanks for joining me. That was a weird intro, wasn't it? I was inspired. You got to be making music about something, right? I think even if you're playing a piece you've already played, you've got to be thinking about what am I trying to express here, right? But this was about, guess what? The rain. The rain, the rain is a big theme here in California uh, right now and maybe where you are. We've gotten more in the last, you know, week or even the, like the last three or four days. It's just been nonstop, which is good. Aside from the fact that some people are in danger or have been in danger and some people, we hope they're all well, of course. Um, so uh, we take, we take, you know, the, the good with the bad, but overall, uh, we need the water. So this was a little piece about the water. I don't know. I don't know. Don't ask me to explain it. I'm just, <laughs> I just, this is all improvised. So uh, welcome back. I'm going to say hello to you guys in a second, but what I have coming up in this show, in today's show, is um, a few things. We're going to see another cool instrument from the Emil Richards collection over at uh, LA Percussion Rentals. Thanks to them for letting me in, into their warehouse of percussion joy. Um, and I, I got a couple other videos off of the web that relate to that that I'm going to show you. Uh, I've got a short lesson from one of my books uh, on clave. If you're looking to learn how to play the clave, I'm going to show you via video. We've got a reading coming up. I think we're going to have a really fun Gimme Five today, so that's coming up a little bit later. Um, Lots of cool stuff. And today's theme is harmony. So you, you wouldn't know it by the opening, but we're going to look, we're looking at harmony in a bigger picture today. Uh, so in the spirit of harmony, let's see who's here. Who is here harmonizing with us on this uh, not so rainy day? Today, the rain stopped actually in uh, January, 2023. I'm going to go over and say hello. Stay right there. Hang on. I'm coming over. Okay, I see the usual suspects, uh, many of you. Thanks for joining um, us, you guys. Uh, Barry, Rebecca, Roseanne is here, of course. Random notes from Roseanne. Uh, and Sue is here. And who else? Lacey, welcome. Daryl, Chris. All right, I think I got everybody. Uh, oh, and Sue. Hello. All right. So welcome, everybody. So today, if you haven't been on a Tuesday Muse Day, it's a, you know, these are all improvised. And, um, but I do have a plan. I do have some goodies every week. I try to dig up some stuff that I think is going to be enriching and exciting. And, and uh, if nothing else, just something you can say, mm, wow, <laughs> I never knew about that. I never didn't know about that. So we're going to get right off to it. Uh, because I want to leave more time for playing and questions and stuff and just kind of hanging out at the end. Last week, I had to run out really quick and eat sushi. I know, tough life, right? So this week, uh, I want to try to push, 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 so we have a little more time at the end, uh, maybe for uh, looping and, and questions and all that. So what I have for you coming right up right now is, is another video. And um, these are from LA Percussion Rentals. This is another instrument from the Emil Richards collection. I will be populating our Patreon site with these. These are for patrons first. You guys get early access. So this video will be over there in its entirety coming up. Maybe not in the next day or two. I've got to fly out tomorrow morning for a conference. I'm going to Florida for the Music Educators Conference. I'm really excited about that. And I'll be back uh, late Friday. So maybe over the weekend, I'll get this posted. But you'll see it right now. And I'll be back on the other side of this. Um, but enjoy this. And this is, again, courtesy of LA Percussion Rentals. And enjoy. Check it out. All right. We're going to look at an amazing instrument right now. This is the bass marimba. And we've actually got two of them, a little one over here. But I'm going to have Abby do an introduction right now. She's going to tell you all about this particular instrument. And then you guys will get to hear it. So these are 
are both base marimbas and they're antique and they have been used a lot in the studios. In fact, base marimba is used a lot in general in recording studios for music um, and films and TV. So um, these are really cool instruments and you can hear bass marimba in, and I'm not totally sure if it's these, but you can hear actually quite a bit of bass marimba in Moana. Mm, nice. Mm -hmm. And what are you using to play it right now? So right now I'm just using these little like bass marimba rubber mallets, which are pretty cool. Um, they have a lot of um, depth and fundamental to them. I saw Emil playing this one time. I, I thought he was on a little footstool. And is that because he was actually extremely short? Or do you, do you, <laughs> sorry, Emil. Uh, do you ever want to get on a footstool or yeah, stand? Yeah. yeah. No, no, when I'm reading music, I definitely get on a footstool. It's kind of fun actually to be um, miniaturized in this instrument. So I'm having yeah. fun right now. Um, nice. And the other thing is, is you can use a lot of different mallets on it as well. So it really changes the sound. All right. We're going to check those out in a second. Okay. Thanks, Abby. Mm-hmm. you guys so check this out so this is a bass marimba almost i guess a contrabass marimba in as much as the range is pretty crazy so this would be your typical four octave marimba low c and then four and a third would be here four and a half would be here a five octave marimba would end here and those are big you guys know that's a big marimba that this one ends there and then we've got another fifth down here. It goes all the way down to, actually, uh, yeah, fourth. It goes down to G. I don't even think the phone mic can pick that up, but. And I'm playing with yarn right now, and I'm gonna switch to rubber. So these are like base pan, steel drum, base pan mallets. They're basically like rubber balls, you know, like just a, a ball. That's been shaped a little bit. Let's hear those. Whoa. Wow. So that has a that has a slappy attack that the yarn doesn't have. It also gets a lot of resonance. I would use these on the lower end if I could put up with the uh, the, the slappiness because I feel like feel like they really, really bring out the sound a lot. Now, speaking of slappiness, check these out. These are called slap mallets, and they're basically um, leather wrapped around a stick, and you know, you can see the shape. And I think, did Emil invent these? I'm you know, sure. maybe, maybe not. He I'm definitely sure. popularized them. I think uh, Vic Firth made a, made a version of these, so. So let's go up a little higher. And let's go up to this other one. Let's check this one out too. This is beautiful. This rose this looks like amazing old school Hunter and Rosewood. I'm I'm guessing. Let's try the rubber. Whoa. Wow. I don't know if you guys can hear that, how well it's coming through. If you're listening to this, don't listen on your phones right now, you guys. Put some head, head earbuds or headphones or, or your, listen on your home system so you can enjoy that super bass. That is awesome. Wow. If I had this at home, I would never leave. I would just... <laughs> <laughs> All right, that is the bass marimbas, contra bass marimba over here. All right, check this out, guys. Before we go, we uh, we forgot to include these. These are like cool little, what are those? Just different types of implements. It all sounds different, right? Oh. 
like bundled plastic. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Sometimes I just mess around with different sounds. Nice. And then. And then, yeah. Yeah, don't hate me. Rhythm sticks. Don't hate me, yeah. Now we're into the spooky movie sounds. Like... You don't care, <laughs> right? We kind no. of bent the pitch a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And just so you guys know, she's a prof Abby's a professional. I'm a professional. Don't try this at home or on somebody else's instrument. You can try it on your own instrument. But just, you know, we're being gentle. Don't worry, we're not hurting the instruments. No marimbas were harmed in the making of this video. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> All right. Amazing. Tell us what you guys think. And um, if have you played a bass marimba? Do you own a low, a low, you know, anything marimba? You own, own a five octave? Uh, Put it in the comments below and thanks for watching. All right, see you guys soon. All right, pretty cool stuff, right? Um, pretty awesome. Oh, is this mic kind of hot? I feel like it's kind of loud. I will move it away a little bit. All right, okay, good. Lacey's using Sennheiser headphones. Awesome, that's what you want for music. You know, for music listening, it really does make a difference, you guys. I have a really nice set of Klipsch uh, near-field monitors here on each side of my computer and a big old old-school amp. It's a amp, uh, what is it, Adcom. I got it in a pawn shop, and it's awesome. It's just huge and powerful, and that's what you want, uh, really, for good audio. But, it, you know, earbuds are fine. Just don't just don't listen to music out of your, your smartphone speakers. <laughs> it's like... Ugh. It's good for information. It's not good for music. All right, but but that's not all. Um, I stole a couple videos off of um, off of the internet because I I thought, well, let's get a couple more examples of a bass marimba. Now there are bass marimbas in different uh, ensembles. There's different types of bass marimbas. There's the Guatemalan marimbas, which are amazing. A lot of people are making marimbas. This first video, you're going to see. Well, both of these upcoming videos, these are just examples I ripped off of YouTube. And uh, both of these people have like uh, bass marimbas that they made. So this could be a project. Uh, and so I'm just gonna play these videos, a couple videos, I'll be right back, check it out. Pretty cool stuff, you guys. Um, people are out there doing it, and you know it. it I think so. Look, look up Walt Hampton too, because Walt Hampton does uh, Zimbabwe ensembles, and he's arranged a lot. He's I, I don't know if he's making his own marimbas, but it his he uses the ones that have the buzz too. But kind of cool, the buzz, right? It helps you hear the pitch uh, in in different ways, and um, so that's I, yeah. I thought that was really cool and something that. You know, if you've never seen that, wow, that's crazy, right? Pretty awesome. And people use those in, uh, like, Walt has a couple books called Hot Marimba, I think. And he does school, he goes, you know, has uh, school ensembles, school-aged children ensembles playing these giant marimbas. And it's so awesome because you see these little kids and they're these giant mallets and they're, like, barely tall enough to, you know, so you could see them behind the marimba. And they're just back there, like, playing these marimbas. Um, it's pretty fun. You do need a big truck, though. 
soccer mom SUV is not going to not going to cut it. Your pickup's not going to cut it. You need a truck <laughs> to get that stuff around. All right. Um, I have a I have a base marimba that's an orf orf base marimba. It's not a, like it's not like those, but it's a little version of it. Uh, so you could put that in your car if you want to have like a low marimba. You could do that. All right. Next up is a quick lesson, and I just found this. It's from my my one of my books because I am going to shamelessly shamelessly promote as much as I can on here because it's my show and it doesn't cost me anything to promote my own products. <laughs> so this is from Kalani's World Rhythms. You'll see the logo in the in the lower right corner of your screen, and um, this is just an example of of how I would teach somebody to play clave really quick. No frills, just super fast. So I'll be back in like, this is like a minute long and I'll see you guys on the other side. But this is an example of what of what comes with that book and uh, download, it comes in a download. You download video and, and sheet music and audio and stuff. All right, here we go. The clave are a pair of matched wooden sticks. Take one of them and place it in your holding hand on the bottom so it's resting on top of your fingers being supported by your palm, just like this. Play it with the other clave, holding it steady, just a little bit above waist level, and use a light touch. I moved. So, um, today's theme is about harmony, and I want to... I don't want to just, I just got a, a little idea that I want to try out on you guys. Um, it's, a, it's a take, a little bit, my version real quick on, uh, I was inspired by one of my ORF teachers, Doug Goodkin, who's a music educator. And uh, he did a little bit on like, it's, it's a little different than this, but he was sort of explaining like, well, what could, what is one note? What is a note in the grand scheme of things? Uh, it, it's it's a lot of different things and the, the the idea here is that how do we create harmony? And I'm also going to pull a little bit from my music therapy background uh, Because this is a technique that we use uh, called reframing sometimes it, we call it reframing and the idea is that if somebody let's just say this is a person here and That's what that's what like they're about. I'm, I'm just gonna use vague terms like you could you could say Here's what somebody says, here's a thought that they have, here's a belief that they have. And sometimes when we're, you know, when we're in the world and we're interacting or, or we're making music, sometimes our, you know, our beliefs don't necessarily fit with somebody, somebody else's beliefs so well. And uh, maybe, you know, we, we're here and they're here. <laughs> so they're like, La, but then we're like, La, and there's a tension there, right? And that's what, that's what tension is. Tension is two things kind of moving in the opposite direction. So the question is, how do we create harmony? Harmony is just a way to get things to fit together so they feel more like they're moving in the same direction even if they're different, right? So just an example. So maybe maybe here's your friend, you know, um, and they could, they could be, now they probably want you to be like right here. Right on the money. They want you to be right at the root. But you could also, honestly, you could be here. could be the, on the third. So they're on the third. Sometimes you have to take the third way. Um, another option would be Now they're still fitting in really well. Now they're the fifth. Sometimes you have to take the fifth. <laughs> or drink a fifth, to fit in, to get along. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Um, 
they could be here. This one's a little more of a stretch though. And maybe if they're really your friend, they'll they'll move down a note. <laughs> So, so what's the lesson here? Uh, a note is, there's lots of ways to relate to each other. And in your interactions, whether it's musical or, or interpersonal, whether it's a conversation or any, anything, the way to create harmony is to, you don't have to move entirely to where somebody else is. In fact, that could be kind of boring because if somebody's here and you know, you're here, you could move here. It's kind of boring. This is way more interesting. <laughs> and all of those fit. All right? You guys get what I'm getting at, right? So harmony is just about alignment. It's about incorporation. It's about coherence, like things moving kind of in the same direction. And what I do and what we do as music therapists sometimes is we, we have to fit what we're doing around somebody else first. And we call that the ISO principle. It means meeting somebody where they are and not asking them to change at all. In other words, in your conversation with somebody, um, maybe you just try to understand exactly how they feel, what they're thinking. It, just try to understand their thinking first and their rationale first. And then how, do you, how can you incorporate what they're doing with something that you're doing? And then maybe those two things can somehow fit together they're not gonna match exactly, that's okay, but maybe they could just coexist. Um, and we do that in music all the time. I'm always looking for ways to help uh, my clients, my, my participants, and this could be in music education, music therapy, recreational music making. The question is, how can I help the people I'm serving, because we are serving them, we're working for them, how can I help them make sense of what they're doing and sometimes I have to bend around what they're doing to do that. And then from there, maybe I can get them, maybe they'll be willing. I wouldn't say I can get them to, but I'm saying maybe they would be willing to also change a tiny bit, like a half step, <laughs> a baby step. So that's, that's, my, that's my spiel on harmony for this week. Uh, I hope that makes sense. What I want to do right now is... I want to get a head start on the Gimme 5 thing. So um, I'm going to talk about the instruments I have here. We're going to move on. And how do we know we're moving on? Hold on. Hang on a second. Because I just changed the title of the slide. <laughs> I can't do it from here. I need a clicker on my computer. Um, one thing before we uh, do this is you guys look right here. Where is it? Bing, 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 bing. <laughs> what is that, you ask? Well, I'm glad you asked. That is a QR code that is for um, Buy Me a Coffee or KO-FI Coffee. It's just a, a thing like a tip jar. So they don't take any money, I don't think. I don't know, I just started using it. Um, but if you guys like the channel and you're not a patron and you say, hey, I really like, you know, that I like the show. I get a lot from the channel or I watch the Tuesday Musees. If you want to drop something in the tip jar, scan it. You could use your smartphone right now. The one you were not listening to the music on earlier. Uh, and you could scan that and then just, it's super easy. Drop a tip in the tip jar. That's going to be here from now on. I'm still working, you guys. All right. Um, Gimme Five, for those of you who are not familiar, Gimme Five is where you, one of you, you're gonna give me five instruments and I'm gonna do a live looping creation from them. So today, this week, I've got a few things available. I still wanna stay in the, the rain theme, so I've got some weird instruments out here, cool sounds. Uh, let's go to the overhead and I'll show you a few of them. Uh, so one thing, this is called the, the cricket sound or the night, there's different names, but it needs reverb, so hang on a second, check this out. All right, so that's that. That's called the cricket. Um, I've got some kashishi, kashishi rattle. We've got pod rattle. 
another pod rattle, even tinier. So you could say small, small seed rattle, super small, super tiny seed rattle. <laughs> I've got the rhythm slider. That's what it's called. We know this because we researched it and we got some help. This is the rhythm slider. It's loud, sorry. Uh, Tambourine-like instrument. Uh, let me go back here because I've got some things I need to show you. I've got this, which is in the rain theme, the thunderstorm theme. Ooh, it's really low today. It's more of a sound effect. So that's thunder tube. Yeah, it's super low, but that's okay. Of course, we've got our trusty uh, rain stick. I've got another cool instrument that I haven't broken out in a while. It's this. You can also use it in for cooking and barbecuing. No, it's a, what this is, I don't know if I can show you guys. Let me see if it'll focus up here. Focus, focus, focus. So I'm trying to show you that it's basically got these little tiny, it looks like a really weird agogo, go but it's, it's actually got, yeah, sorry, it's not in focus, but um, it is essentially, it's like a double vibra slap, right? Vibra slap type thing. And uh, I don't know where I got it. I got it a long time ago. It's just, it's like this giant spring. And you could play it like, you know, like that. And I thought, eh, it kind of goes with the night rain weird theme. Um, I do have the cream, which is here, the wooden log drum you guys saw. I was playing this earlier. That's another option. And then, of course, I have the wind gong. Again, kind of going with the storm rain theme. Wind gong. Back there. Um, and then whatever else is in, within reach. I've got a cajon, you know, I've got the usual suspects behind me. Bongos over here, I've got some congas. Um, so why don't you guys make a list, make your own list starting now, and we're gonna do a couple other things and we'll come back. Make your own list, pick five instruments. If you want, you can also pick like four of the percussion instruments, and then you could say, and flute, right? You could say that, or whatever. and some melodic thing if you want. I've got a bunch of flutes over here. Uh, if you want, you can also pick, you can also suggest like a style. It could be like ambient, like I did in the opening kind of. It could be just ambient, it could be rhythmic, it could be fast or it could be slow. I don't know, give us some words to describe. Give us some descriptors and I'll do my best. I'm not promising anything, <laughs> but I will do my best uh, to make it happen. All right. We're gonna go back over to the table and uh, to the desk. See you in a second. All righty, folks. Okay, let's get this mic back over. I think uh, I think the volume is okay, right? Um, yeah. So the rhythm slider. We had a question about the rhythm slider. The rhythm slider is from now. I'm forgetting there. I posted on the Facebook group uh, about this. Um, ah, what was the name? Roseanne will remember. What was the name of their company? Uh, per system System Percussion, I think. Right? System Percussion. I don't think they're in business anymore. Um, so it's kind of cool. I I was sort of hoping I could help them by promoting it, but I don't think they're in business anymore. So um, it'll be a, what do they call it? In just for posterity sake, I guess. Okay, we have a reading. Now you guys keep keep coming with the give me five stuff that you can keep doing that. We're not cutting that off yet. Uh, you still have some time, so so take your time. I do wanna do a reading right now though. And this reading is gonna be from, uh, one of my favorite books, and that is the Radiant Sutras by Lauren Roche, a colleague, and um, it kind of relates to harmony. I think I, you know, I just kind of like open and open pages and flip through until I find something that I feel resonates. And this is a b kind of about resonation, so I just want to read it for you. It's really short, and I hope it's it's just inspirational for you. Um, so this is from the Radiant Sutras by Lauren Roche. Um, in the little book, I have the mini book. 
page 129, it looks like. All around you, in every moment, the world is offering a feast for your senses. Songs are playing. Tasty food is on the table. Fragrances are in the air. Colors fill the eyes with light. Who you long for... Oh, you, sorry. <laughs> you who long for union. Attend this banquet with loving focus. The outer and inner worlds open to each other. Oneness of vision, oneness of heart. Right here, in the midst of it all, mount that elation, ascend with it, become identical with the ecstatic essence embracing both worlds. Pretty cool stuff, you guys. So, you know, to me, it, he's re reiterating, or I don't know if it's a he, it's, these are from ancient writings, and uh, they've been translated into English by Lauren Roche. Um, you know, this gets back to what a lot of our enlightened teachers have been recommending <laughs> for centuries, and what some of our modern spiritual teachers also are recommending, is, and that is that we connect with our senses, we pay attention, we enjoy being alive. We are sensory beings. Uh, you know, unfortunately, a lot of teachings, even spiritual teachings and religious teachings, ask us to do the opposite. They ask us to disregard, you know, what we feel and what we what we sense, and and they you know they ask us to imagine things, uh, a lot of things. So um, it's okay to imagine stuff, but if you want to really connect with uh, like the world and and feel the the nowness, you know, and the beingness, I call it, um, then you really want to tune into your senses because that's how we connect with the world. We're we're physical beings. We that's that's what we do. Uh, it's where we are. So connect with the world. Yeah. Sight, sounds, touch, smells, taste, enjoy it. Be, be, you know, what you're designed to be. Be a person, be a human. And then just realize how amazing that experience is. And it, that's what you're born to do. You don't have to do anything. You don't need money. You just need your own attention and focus. And I like that they use the word loving focus in there. A lot of good stuff in that, you know, three short paragraphs. So I hope uh, that also relates to this idea of harmony. Um, it relates to the idea of acceptance and accepting, you know, the world the way it is. Doesn't mean we can't strive to change things, but we first need to accept it. You know, it is what it is. Just like when I work with clients, I have to accept them for who they are, you know, in the moment, and I have to attend to them with loving focus. So I try to do that. All right, we're going to move on and just do a little Q&A thing before we get back to uh, the Gimme 5 and some jamming. We're doing well on time. So you guys uh, put in your list of five things coming up now, Like, and if you guys have any questions, um, type your questions. And uh, all right, welcome, Christina. And who is that? Crit? What is that? Crit? I can't, I can't read it. It's very small. <laughs> I need to, <laughs> I thought I already made, let me see if I can make my fonts bigger. Hold on. Will that work? No, it's not doing anything. All right. I got to have uh, Ecamm Live for, God, I'm almost, a, I'm not a senior yet, you guys, but I'm, it's not getting any farther away. Um, any, yeah, anything about what you've seen so far in the show, we want to keep the questions kind of relevant, relevant and, uh, you know, related to what we're doing right now. Um, any, cause it's all here, instruments, anything that's happening. Um, so yeah, send them over. And if not, then, you know, we will continue. All right. So, so Roseanne, is that, 
Is that your selection or are you just forwarding me one of the give me five sets? Just let me know. I think that was the only set we got, right? <laughs> Is that right? Uh, so just confirm with me uh, and then we'll, we'll create something. I have to look at that. So, ah, nice. Oh, you know what? I don't know. I have all those items. I'll I have to substitute something possibly. Um, the cricket instrument, I believe LP Latin Percussion was the first company to make those. And then the red one that I have is from Minel, was made by Minel. Most companies have a version of it now. I'm not sure who, you know, where it came from. It might, you know, like a lot of the instruments that we have that are mass produced, you know, the factory made were made by you know other people and then those companies like made their own version of it um so i i have two versions of it um i think i can show you the other one i have over there but yeah those are that one is mine which i and i like that one i've had it a long time i like the sound of it all right so we do have a give me five set so um Tune in next week and try again if it if you didn't get chosen. But we're gonna do uh so is it crit? Is that how is that how you say it? Crit? That's how I'm gonna say it. it. That's what it looks like. So welcome and thank you for that. And I don't believe I have the sleigh bells. So you said hand claps, gong, sleigh bells, seashell, and bongos. And is the seashell the shell in back of me over there? The conch shell? Is that the one? You were talking about, I assume, because it's the only one in the shot. That, I, I would love to play that. Uh, so this this could be a very interesting, <laughs> it could be a very interesting, uh, give me five. But I'm I'm down for whatever, you know. I, I, you can't judge things ahead of time, you know. You I mean, you can, but, you know, like when you're brainstorming with people, the idea is just to get ideas out and not judge them. Don't prejudge them, because you don't know until you try it, right? And even if you try it, I wouldn't even judge it then because, you know, you learn, you learn a lot of things by trying things out the first time and then you, you know, can refine it the second and third, fourth, and then you learn how to do it. Um, okay. So I don't think I have sleigh bells here. I could probably use a tambourine though. So that would be, I think it would be a reasonable substitute. So, okay, I don't. I think that was the, was that the only question? Was who made the cricket? That's the only one I got. So if there's more, Roseanne, just uh, uh, message me on the phone here and I'll take it over there with me. So I'm gonna go back over to the uh, percussion station and we'll get something going. Okay, hang on one second. So I'm glad you picked this actually because now I get to show it off. Uh, this is a conch shell, a Hawaiian style conch shell, and it's got a couple features that I will show you. One is that it's actually got a brass mouthpiece. So if my camera will focus, come on camera. I can make it focus, but then it has it gets lines on. I don't know. I think the autofocus is limited. Anyway, it's got a. You can see it's got a brass um, ring that's fitted on there, makes it really comfortable. It's also got a a rope that's tied through a grommet right through the shell. Kind of fragile, but um, this is basically like a trumpet at this point, uh, and you just hold it up and play it. So maybe we'll start with that, uh, or somehow integrate it into today's show. Um, one question, I guess this is from you, Roseanne, is uh, were those bass marimbas using a diatonic scale? The two, yeah, I believe so. The two, the two marimbas that we saw after the original, you know, just the, like the homemade ones, I believe most of those are diatonic because they don't have, you know, obviously they don't have the accidentals up there. Some of those uh, marimbas could be made in a pentatonic scale because a lot of the music um, is pentatonic. Uh, but I think it's very common to use a diatonic scale or a seven note scale instead of a five note scale. 
All right. That and you can, of course, you can look that up to confirm. It may not, you know, I'm sure there's variations. Um, all right. So let me see what we. Let me go back to the list because I want to get all the instruments together. Here's the other cricket. Just FYI, my table looks a little slanted, but I'm gonna. I'll try to use it. Um, I just want to show you guys. So here is, and I found that you have to position this uh, metal cylinder. It's got a slit in the middle, and it it changes the sound based on where it is. But this is the minor, and this is the LP. About the same, about the same sound, but you can see they're slightly different. And this one has four ball bearings, and this one has three. So. <laughs> more crickety, more cricket for your, more cricket bang for your buck. Um, all right, so what do we have? So we have hand claps, gong, sleigh bells, which I will, I mean, actually, I have these bells. Maybe I'll use these. Those are nice. Let's use those. Those count as sleigh bells, I think. Um, seashell and bongos. All right, so really, I don't need a lot of this. I just want to get, I want to clear my table a little bit. And let's get the bongos. Now, another thing, just FYI, when I set up to do looping, um, what I try to do, because I've got you guys can't see it, but I've got one mic here. This is the mic I use. I use a shotgun mic right here, aimed right at me for talking. That mic is not the most musical. It's kind of brittle. You can probably tell when I switch back and forth. Let me switch back and forth between my uh, that and my other mic. So this is the shotgun mic. It's made for capturing voice, mainly. This is the other mic up here, and this mic is for instruments. It's... Um, warmer and I know the levels are not exactly the same but this mic I'm pointing to that I have on right now you can tell it's a lot warmer sound it just gives me um, it's more musical uh, than this one <laughs> which is they both work but depending on what I'm recording what I try to do is I set up the instruments so the the natural volume of the instruments will kind of be balanced in relationship to the mic, and that way I don't have to turn it up and down the recording volume uh, so much, because that is also work. So, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna clear out the looper, and I will get things going. I don't know, you know, we'll have to see where we end up. Um, but I wanna check, yeah, see that. Sometimes these, I still haven't learned how to use this looper really well, and sometimes things change on me in here. I don't know. I don't know why. So I have to reset things sometimes. Um, all right. So we've got bongos, shell, <laughs> hand claps, gong, and yeah. Hand claps, gong, sleigh bells, seashell, and bongos. <laughs> I'll try to, that is, I love this. That's the weirdest Gimme 5 I think we've had so far. So it's, I'm gonna tell you right now, it's gonna start off kinda just loose, ambient stuff. Let's see where, let's see where it ends up though. Don't, don't, don't bail on me yet. Give me a chance. <laughs> All right. Okay, enjoy you guys.
Man, today has been the weirdest music that we've ever made. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> that's what I have for you today. <laughs> it's kind of fun, sort of weird, but you know, cool uh, combination. So I hope I hope that was enjoyable on some level. If you know, at least being weird. You know, you guys got it. Can we just carry that energy and attitude forward into the next week and say, you know, don't back away from an, an experience and especially something that you, you know, you wouldn't normally maybe try, you know, I think that's a great lesson. Um, did you guys like the conch? I am an amateur conch player uh, or conch, conch shell, conch shell. Uh, this is a beautiful shell. I have a couple of these, and uh, it is in the Native American tradition. Uh, Hawaiians are Native Americans, FYI, uh, technically. And uh, but both Native American, as in continental uh, Native Americans, and Hawaiians, and you know people around the world use the use the conch shell as a uh, trumpet. It's been used like that for centuries. Pretty cool. Bongos, wind gong, uh, hand claps, sleigh bells <laughs> for the holidays. All right, I'm gonna go back over uh, to the desk before we sign off. Hang on, I'll be right there. All right, friends. Um, Okay, so any any questions or comments? We're we're running a little bit over, and that's okay. But we're going to wrap up. I do want to uh, remind everybody that we have a special guest Sunday, January twenty eighth, coming up for our percussion hang. And if you haven't already, come see us at patreon.com slash kalani. That is our main site, um, and that's how you can pitch in. In addition to using the the little QR code that's down here, <laughs> here in the corner. But I want to thank you guys for spending a little bit of your uh, evening with me, and thank you Roseanne Musser for chipping in and helping out, and your guidance, and you know just keeping all these rowdy people in line. Um, so what you guys can do for us is to spread the word. Um, this show is really. For you guys, you know, it's for the community. I really appreciate all the the good vibes, no pun intended. But musicians, and especially percussionists, uh, we need to stick together and help each other out. And so I hope I've helped you in some way. Please uh, pay it forward. Go help somebody else. Go play music with people, for people, against people. No, don't do that. You can incorporate what you're what they're doing into what you're doing and find harmony together all right so that's another message i i um hope i hope that you can do that for yourself um all right we're gonna sign off thanks for thanks for being here everyone and we'll see you next week for another tuesday music all right have a good night <laughs>